So you want to learn how to read a chest x-ray. Well, good. This is a skill that a good respiratory therapist should have. Now, we're not trying to make you a radiologist, but after you've looked at about a thousand chest x-rays, you'll be pretty good at knowing your way around them. So I would recommend getting started looking at your thousand now so you get there quicker. Dr. Spencer Gay and his staff at the University of Virginia Health Science Center's Department of Radiology have a great site. Here's the URL, or just Google uh, reading the chest x-ray, and you'll find University of Virginia site. I borrowed heavily from that great site in order to make this presentation. First, some basic concepts. A specialized bulb called a cathode ray tube showers energy called gamma radiation the energy that it emits is not visible. However, a specially prepared plate can be uh, exposed with this energy. And as you can see in the picture, it turns the plate from white to black. If you put objects in front of the plate and shower it with the correct amount of energy, you can distinguish be between certain types of objects. For example, in the picture, you see the metal ball left a shadow on the plate because the energy could not pass through the metal ball and reach the plate. However, the wood has a gray shadow because some of the energy was able to penetrate the less dense wood and hit the plate. So really what the x-ray does is distinguish between items of different densities. And here are the four densities, metal, fluid, bone. The plate is of course black where nothing blocked the x-rays from hitting the plate. Another concept that you should know is that items closer to the plate tend to be more distinct than items that are further away. With the basic concepts out of the way, let's talk about a couple of common presentations or positions for the chest x-ray. When the plate is at the patient's chest, this is called a PA chest or posterior to anterior and that's because the x-rays travel from the cathode ray tube through the back to the plate which is at the front of so it passes from the patient's posterior to their anterior and here's what the x-ray looks like. We'll go over different elements of this x-ray later. More common for respiratory therapists to see is what's called the AP chest or anterior to posterior chest. This is the type commonly done on those patients that can't leave the ICU to go to the x-ray department for their chest film. It's done with a portable machine which is pushed into the patient's room. And here's an image shot by the AP technique, a portable chest x-ray. Not as good as the PA, is it? There's a reason it's not as good. And here's the reason why. When the tube is too close to the patient, foreground objects tend to be less distinct than background objects. Uh, it has a tendency to enlarge the heart abnormally and sort of fuzz out those foreground objects. Remember the thing closest to the plate is the most distinct. With the PA chest however uh, where the light source is put and I call it light but it's not visible light is put further back it tends to do a better job of preserving the clarity of foreground objects. Now that you know concepts and positions, let's talk about where major structures are located. Here's another one of the University of Virginia's pictures showing the pulmonary arteries, the pulmonary veins, and the airways and where they would be located on the chest compared to the uh, uh, chest x-ray. Here's another showing the position of the heart in the chest x-ray. So you can see where the right heart border should be, the left ventricle border, uh, as well as the aortic knob, and there's also a lateral, which uh, is seldom looked at by a respiratory therapist. Here's a slide from pediatric pulmonologist Dr. Richard Rimbecki showing the right lower lobe's position, uh, both in the uh, AP or PA view and the lateral view. Uh, what you can notice here is the right upper lobe takes up most of the upper part of the chest, with the right middle lobe being the anterior and the right lower lobe being posterior. On the left side, the left upper lobe takes up most of the anterior portion of the chest and the left lower lobe takes up the most of the uh, posterior portion, as you can see in the lateral. Another important topic is 
whether or not you have a quality chest x-ray. There are four indicators of quality. This is important because there are questions on the National Board for Respiratory Care exam about this uh, particular topic. Uh, just think PEER, P-I-E-R, positioning, inspiration, exposure, and rotation. And I'll talk about each of these. A good position is one that at the top shows the entire T1, Rib1, and the apices of the lung. And at the bottom, the entire costophrenic angle, or where the costophrenic angle should be, uh, should be exposed. I would have liked to see the x-ray in this picture moved up a hair because we see a lot of the abdomen, which we don't need, and we cut through what looked like T1 at the top. Patients are asked to take a deep breath for a chest x-ray to fill the air, the lungs with air and expose as much of the uh, lung tissue as possible. A good breath is one that exposes, as the diaphragm drops down, exposes nine to ten ribs. So you can count them to see if the patient was able to take a deep breath. It's easier to look at an x-ray if the objects are where they're supposed to be. And this is where rotation is important. The technique that's been adapted to ensure that the film is not rotated is to line up an anterior structure with a posterior structure like in this picture where we're showing the heads of the clavicles and how they line up with the spine. The last indicator of quality is exposure. Now this is the hardest to uh, illustrate and the hardest to see, but I'll do my best to explain it. Underexposure is an x-ray that doesn't reveal enough information. The x-ray appears too white because enough, not enough energy was used to shoot the x-ray. Uh, the, there's calculations used by the x-ray technician to determine how much energy to penetrate an, an x-ray that's over-penetrated. In an overexposed or over-penetrated x-ray, you might lose the ability to see soft tissue structures, such as a tumor in the lung tissue. The properly exposed x-ray is one in which the tiny spinous processes, those little points uh, on the spine are visible even through the middle of the mediastinum toward the diaphragm. That's it. I think you've got it. Next time we'll uh, take a look at pathology in part two.